hi guys how are you doing and welcome back to my channel my name is ams so today's video we're going to talk about serum rubber tintum known as jelly bean before i start please subscribe and support my channel and don't forget to click that notification bell so you'll be updated every time we have a new video Sedum rubrotinctum or red jelly bean usually is a bright green leaves, but if receiving more sun exposure, it will turn deep red and best position is morning sun. If you grow it in undercover, make sure that this plant still receiving strong bright light to maintain the color and shape. Sedum rubrotinctum aurora, known as pink jelly bean, it has shades of mauve pink, cream, and lime green, and they love areas that receiving partial sun or strong filtered light. But I noticed that pink jelly bean had a harder time to acclimate to intense heat and burn easier than the green jelly bean, so best to position this in morning sunlight. Or put it in under cover in a strong filtered light to maintain the color and shape. This is Sedum rubrotinctum red berry. If you notice, the leaves of the red berry are tiny compared to other jelly beans. It has lime green base, combination of red to brown when exposed to direct sunlight. I position my red berry in outdoor undercover but receives direct morning sun and the color turns to deep brown. And I notice that this plant is a slow grower. If you place this plant in undercover, just receiving bright light, the color stays green and shiny. And I water this plant when the soil is completely dry. And this is Sedum pachypilum or blue jelly bean. The leaves are silvery green and tipped with red when receives strong light. This one grows in a shady area if you notice, the tip is not as deep red as the one grows in the bright light or full sun, but the color of the leaves are looking blue. This is also a sedum pachypilum that grows in direct morning sun. I care for this plant, same as the red jelly bean. This is my mother plant, and this one is already need a trim. To stay compact and bushy, I prune my jelly bean when the stem get longer, and I usually cut an inch or two from the top, so I can use it for propagation. And by trimming your jelly bean, you can maintain the shape, and it's your opportunity to remove some dry leaves and dead stems. This is what it looks like when you don't trim your jelly bean. It's leggy and the leaves are not compact and not bushy. Sedum rubrotinctum or jelly beans require little care and low maintenance. It's perfect for neglectful gardeners. And you can water this plant when the soil is dry. These are all the stem cuttings from the trimming that we can propagate. Jelly beans are easy to propagate. 
You can propagate by leaves or by stem or by just pruning. For my soil, I just use a well-draining soil mixed with perlite. To propagate from leaves, gently twist them off the stem without leaving any part behind and can place to dry soil or in a container. You can air dry your cuttings within 2 to 3 days before planting. But if your soil is dry, you can plant your cuttings straight away and that's what I'm going to do. Propagating by stem, simply just stick your stem cuttings to the dry soil or slightly moist soil. After planting my cuttings, I place it under cover, receiving indirect bright light. With my sedum robotinsum leaf, I just place it in a container for dry propagation and wait until roots formation appear and then that's the time I'm going to place it on top of the soil. It will be helpful if you label your propagation with plant ID and date. So this red jelly bean was propagated 6 weeks ago. Let's have a look if we already have roots formation happening and check as well if the leaf have any new plants coming out. So we got roots coming out from our stem propagation and some of the leaf has small plant growing out as well. So this is the time I start watering my propagation. But if you seen root formation after 2 to 3 weeks of propagating, then you can already start watering your plant. These are some of my arrangement using jelly bean, placed under cover but with indirect bright light. Has a nice color and compact. This one is receiving direct sun in the afternoon. The color of this jelly bean is deep red. This arrangement is about two years old. I have another arrangement here with jelly bean, placed under cover in a shady spot. As you see, the leaves are green and far apart. It's elongated, reaching for the sunlight. So now you know how important the position and lights to our jelly bean. My red jelly bean, red berry, and some of my sedum pachypitum are receiving direct morning sun.
and it also provides protection for severe frost and hail damage to all my succulent plants. If you have a spot in your garden that receives morning sun, take advantage of it. Build or place a shelving and some of your plants will love it. That's it for today guys and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.